one of the life lessons that I've picked up along the way is maybe pay a little less attention to words and, and put more stock in actions. Based on the actions we've seen over the last couple of days between the U.S. and China, where would you say we're at in terms of these trade talks and, and or guess I should really say this ratcheting up of tensions between the two countries? Well, I think it's a very bad sign on both sides. Uh, first, the president's announcement that he's going to raise uh, tariffs to 10 percent on uh, the rest of uh, Chinese goods that are coming into the United States, which really impacts consumers. It's going to be on clothing, electronics, toys, uh, uh, iPhones and things like that. That's really going to start hitting American households and their pocketbooks. And then for the Chinese to uh, <coughs> retaliate by, <coughs> excuse me, by allowing their currency to depreciate, as well as saying that they're going to halt any purchases of farm goods. Uh, this is really a, a sign of deepening friction, perhaps a little bit more animosity uh, between the top leaders of both the United States and China. It does not uh, bode well for any type of a trade deal. Uh, Ambassador, do you think that things won't now change course until after the U.S. election? I don't think it's in any uh, side's interest to wait until after the election. Uh, American consumers are at risk. Uh, Chinese workers, uh, their businesses are at risk. And the uh, huge drop uh, in sales of Chinese goods to America. China is still very much uh, dependent on uh, exports, especially to the United States. They export more to America than they do to all the EU countries combined. 20% of the Chinese economy depends on exports. So it's not in the interest of the Chinese government or the United States to allow this trade war to continue. There, we need to find a way to kind of come to a pause, a reset, and to uh, perhaps have a, a cessation of some of these back and forth uh, hostilities, uh, whether it's the president uh, announcing 10% tariffs on all remaining Chinese goods, which he says he may raise up to 25%. Uh, the Fed and so many other uh, federal institutions have already said this is costing American consumers with just the tariffs already in place, the ones in May, not the ones that might go up in uh, September, but all the tariffs in place already are costing American households anywhere from 800 to over $1,000 per year. Uh, so we, we need to have a reset. We need to pause. We need to get people back to the negotiating table. Ambassador, I'm, you've dealt with China before. You've had trade talks with China before. Um, if this does actually get worse before it gets better right now, what are the levers on both sides that could still be pulled? Well, obviously, uh, China uh, could uh, raise tariffs on the agricultural goods that it might want to buy, which uh, so it can say that they'll buy some more. But uh, if, if it's too expensive, they're not going to do that. Uh, China doesn't have to resort to tariffs in order to uh, retaliate. Uh, we see what they're doing with their currency. Uh, they can simply just tell their industries, uh, don't buy Boeing airplanes, don't buy soybeans. Uh, you don't need a tariff to do that. You can just say, oh, we're going to start ordering Airbus. We're going to start ordering uh, uh, German-made MRI and CAT scan and X-ray uh, machines. We can buy all these products, heavy machinery, uh, from other countries. We don't have to resort to a tariff on U.S. products. Uh, and the same thing, of course, with the United States. Uh, the United States could, in fact, follow through uh, on uh, raising so the tariffs on all remaining Chinese goods up to 25 percent. And that obviously is going to hurt the Chinese economy, but it's also going to hurt the American consumer, which is why, you know, your previous guests have said in a trade war, there are no winners. Everybody loses and particularly consumers. So, Ambassador, what does a, a detente, a, a relaxation start to look like, given that both sides are accusing the other of either not negotiating in good faith or, or being intransigent? Um, what do we have to start to see? Well, I, I, <clears throat> obviously, we need to get the negotiators talking again. We, uh, I don't think anybody is expecting a big grand bargain anymore. It's going to be uh, modest uh, steps, increases uh, in purchases of U.S. goods, uh, more liberalization of the Chinese markets. Uh, allowing more U.S. or foreign companies to operate in China without having to have a Chinese partner, uh, allowing American firms to be 100 percent in control of their destiny instead of being only a 49 percent uh, partner or owner of, a, of an enterprise. Uh, so I think those are some of the things, uh, commitments for enforcement of intellectual property. Uh, it's going to be harder for the Chinese to move away from some of their big subsidies of uh, some of their emerging industries. Uh, whether it's in solar, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, biopharmaceuticals, 
uh, or, or semiconductors. I mean, they, they want to move away from low-cost, low-wage, uh, export-driven manufacturing to more uh, of an innovation economy. And so they're, they're going to be uh, very, very much uh, mm -hmm. uh, intent on trying to prop up and help some of these emerging industries. We, of course, in the United States have great concerns about that unfair subsidy, and perhaps our tariffs would be targeted at those products coming from those industries that remain heavily subsidized. But I think we need to, uh, first of all, not go through with the 10 percent tariff uh, September 1 on all remaining Chinese goods, which really impact consumer goods, toys, electronics, uh, clothing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we need to get the Chinese to uh, recommit to purchasing agricultural goods as a first step.